Hello everyone, today I thought we would cover undoing stuff in our Rails app. We're going to start by taking a look at undoing the generator commands, and then we'll take a look at undoing the database migrations, how to do rollbacks, uh, and you know check the status of the database and all that other stuff. Shouldn't be too long, just a couple uh, basic things to cover. So we'll start by creating a new Rails app. Let me make sure that I don't have anything here. Uh, should be good. So we'll say Rails new video and run that I already have vs code open just to save us a little bit of time uh, but the basic premise here is if you're working on a development server it's usually okay for you to just roll back your database kind of at will uh, so in this case we're doing it mostly from a developer perspective you probably don't want to go into your production code and just run a uh, generator delete command and then undo a database migration that might not be you know the best course of action but uh, let's pretend we're talking about like you're developing you haven't done anything or you've done so much and you haven't like checked in on git recently and you want to like fix your mistake without having to like start over right so let's say we have a rails g scaffold for a post it will give each post a title and a body of type text doesn't really matter go ahead and run that now to undo this command, you might be tempted to like come into VS Code and uh, you know go into your app, go into your views, delete the posts, go into your models, delete the posts, go into your controllers, delete the posts. But as you can see here, uh, if you run a scaffold generator, for example, you're getting a lot more than just those files. You also have your test files here, your helpers. So it's kind of a pain to go through and delete all of those. Thankfully, we can just hit the up arrow key and then go over here and change this G to a D. Now this part right here after the post is optional. You don't need to tell it all of the, the, the fields you gave it. Uh, so we can run it like that, but we can also run the scaffold again. And maybe we just tell it to rails D scaffold, rails D scaffold the post. Go ahead and run that. It'll do the same thing. You can see here red text means it removes it and it just goes through and it mimics what the generator did. It just removes all of those. Now, one thing to note is if you ran this migration, you can get yourself into kind of a not great state. So I'm gonna go ahead and break my, my app real quick. Uh, we'll run the scaffold. We'll then do a rail C. We'll do a post post.create with a title of test and a body of case. Oops, we have to actually do a Rails DB colon migrate first. Sorry about that. And then we can do a Rails C and then we can run that command again. That works. Now, if we exit out of here and we do a Rails uh, D scaffold for, oops, scaffold for the post, that will delete it. But, and this is an important caveat here, if, if we do a Rails DB colon migrate colon status, which allows us to see the status of our database, we can see here we have this one migration ID here, but this is not actually the, the one that was generated with the post. So you can see here it says no file. So if we now generate that post scaffold again, and then without running a migrate command, we run a Rails C, we can end up in a situation where our post.count is still one. You can do a post.first. It still has that data, but we actually can't uh, grab the migrate status here. So this is uh, is not gonna work. If we try to do like a Rails DB colon migrate here, or, or sorry, not a Rails DB colon, if we try to do a Rails DB colon rollback, it's gonna tell us this is an unknown migration version error. So in this case, you might need to like manually create this file so that you can trick it into thinking, uh, you know, it can it can delete this. We come in here and maybe we hit F11. We come into our DB folder, our migrate. We grab this last one here that has this, this version number, right? Uh, and then we come in here and instead of it being this, uh, this unknown number, we take this, we change it to be that version number. And then we run a Rails DB colon rollback. We now manage to undo that command. So the rollback is always going to allow you to undo a migration. So if we come in here and we just generate a couple more models, maybe we do like a model for comment that has a body of type text. And then we do like a Rails G migration add likes to posts. And we say likes are a counter maybe. So like a likes of type integer. Just something like that. We can then do a Rails DB colon migrate to add all of this into our database. So we get our, our post table, our comments table, and our likes. 
And now if we want to check on the status of our database, we can once again do a rails db colon migrate colon status command shows us that we now have these three migrations in here. And if we don't delete the actual files, we can now do a rails db colon rollback just like that. And you can see this rollback removes the likes here. So if we now run our db status, we get, oops, let me just do it like this. We get two of these that are up, which means they're in the database. And then we get the one that's down, which is that likes that we just rolled back. So we can then maybe go in there and uh, in our migrations here, we check the likes out, we change this, and now we give it a default of zero. And then in our console, we can now run a rails db colon migrate. And we can run that, that migration that we changed because we had a better idea of how we wanted to do this. Uh, and and you know it, it works just fine instead of having to like go through and drop the database, for example. So what we can do is we can run a rails db colon migrate colon status command. We can check this and we can grab a specific one of these. Maybe we want to undo the comments. We can then do a rails db colon migrate colon down with a version environment variable like control L. Uh, oops, actually, I don't want to do that. And we copy like the comments and then we can undo the comments here by pasting in that migration number and that undoes it. So now if we run a rails db colon migrate status, we can see here that the comments are down uh, and the other two are still in our database. So that is how you would undo a specific version. Now, if you want to go back to specifically when you had the posts, you can do something like a db colon migrate to add this back in. We can then do a db colon migrate colon status. And then let's say we want to go back to the posts. Well, we know that was like uh, two steps ago, I guess. So we can do a Rails db colon rollback with a step size equal to two. And if we do this, we can now see we have the add likes to post being reverted and we have the comments being reverted. So now, oops, if we come in here and we do a db status, uh, we can see that we have the up for the posts and the down for the comments and the likes. So by running that command, we're effectively telling it how many steps to go back, which is a bit like your Git versioning, right? Uh, so that's sort of how you can do uh, some of the database undoing and some of the generator undoing. Of course, uh, I don't remember if we covered it, but if you do like a Rails G controller pages home, you can do a Rails D controller pages to get rid of that controller. Works with models too, Rails G uh, or Rails D model for the comment maybe, and that'll destroy your comment model. Uh, you know, you have a lot of options here that allow you to sort of clean this stuff up as you're going. I generally try to avoid using like the rollbacks in, in tutorials just because I like making sure everyone's on the exact same page and it's easy to, to get stuck there. So yeah, I just wanted to cover this because it is something that is pretty helpful, uh, especially if you uh, are working on something for an extended period of time and you're like me and you forget to commit every once in a while, you end up in a situation where you got like six migrations, you got to step back through them because you forgot to change like a, a default value for something. Uh, but it's also just helpful to like pop into a new application, run a Rails DB colon migrate colon status and just say, oh, look, this this has, you know, posts and it has likes or whatever. So like you're you're in some new company and, and you're trying to piece together what their their dev database looks like. This is one of those commands you can you can run to sort of see like what the status of the thing you're working on is uh, because you have no idea you just started there and they just gave you a project that's way beyond the the scope of what you can do or at least what you think you can do of course we're all capable of more than we think we can do but yeah i just wanted to cover this thought it'd be helpful uh hopefully it was and hopefully i will see you in the next tutorial